would be crazy to have a wonderful gift like I've seen displayed tonight and still yet not get the elevation of which God wants to take you. Amen. And I heard the Lord say, the only thing that can keep you from getting there is you. Oh, yes. I'm so grateful that I was even asked to come. You know, my prayer to God is, wherever you open a door of utterance for me, I will seek your face, and I will walk in there, and I will give you, give to the people that which you want me to give. I have one major scripture that God gave me tonight to give to you. And I want this to become almost a monumental scripture in the, light of, in the life of all creative people. It is found in the book of Psalms. It is the 84th chapter, and this is what it sounds like. How lovely is your dwelling place. Yes, yes. Oh God. Oh Lord of hosts. I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole body, my soul, and with my mind. I will shout joyfully to the living God. Yes. Even the sparrows have found a home, and the swallow builds her nest and raises her young at a place near your altar. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody missed that. Hallelujah. God says, even the animals, yes. they have found a place near the altar of God to raise their young. Yes. Tonight, I want you to understand something about being a creative person. You must make the altar one of your best places in all the world. And the reason why you must do that is because of the fact that the flesh is always looking for a place and a way to display itself. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're going to keep the flesh down mm -hmm. is if you make the altar yeah. a place yeah. that you dwell. Yeah. The Bible says, I long, Father, to dwell in your secret place. I long, Father, to be at your court around my altar. When I began to research this and I asked the Holy Spirit, May, I said, what shall I tell them? He said, you tell them what the altar is all about. For so many years, and I've been in church a long time, y'all, people have made the altar a place of disgrace. Because if you come to the altar, you sin, you messed up, and therefore everybody in the audience is sitting there going like, wonder what she did wrong. But God said, make the altar a resting place. A place that you can say, Father, I long to be in your presence. But let me help you out. The altar is not just this altar. Mm -hmm. You can make your altar wherever you are. Amen. Amen. God said every great person needs to have a personal altar of their own. A place that they can run to. A place that they can meet God. A place that they can be in his presence. A place that they can reach out. And touch him and he touches them back. Mm -hmm. You see, God said, in this hour, I'm looking for some people that are willing to hear my voice. Yes. You see, saints, we've got to get to a place now that we can hear from God yes. for our instructions. Yes. We have made enough mistakes on our own. Right now. And you must know that, that even as a people, and I'm going to say this, as an African-American people, we are behind because we have failed to find the way to the very heart of God. God said, I've been standing there waiting for you. I've been waiting for you to show up so I can give you instructions. Can I tell you the way to get to him? It's through the Holy Spirit. I've been doing a series on the Holy Spirit, y'all. And he is amazing. He's not somebody to be afraid of. He's amazing. The Holy Spirit has the authority to give you whatever Father has for you. The Word says, whatever God says, I will tell you. And if you are ever at loss about anything in your life, find your altar and call the Holy Spirit alongside. And I promise you, he will instruct you when you are going through. You see, in the creative world, there will be people that will come up against you. There will be people that will not accept your gift. There will be people that don't even understand what you do. There will be people that make the creative arts just a sideline, a fillery, something to do when there's nothing else to do. And that's not where God wants you. God, if there's a mountain I'm pulling down, that's going to be just for you. I want you to rise up like never before. But you've got to make sure that you must develop an intimate place. What does intimacy mean? I stuck up some definitions for you. Intimacy, 
talks about the state, first of all, of being intimate. But it's a familiar place. It's a personal place. It's a private place. It's a place of belonging, a place of closeness, a place of affection, a place of relationship, a place of confidence, of warmth, and caring. When I was studying this, the Lord told me to ask you all a question. And I wrote my question down. And this is what the question says. Are you in love with Father? Are you in a love relationship? Are in you a lasting relationship? I said, okay, Father. You know, you can't put me out there like that and not explain it. Am I in a love relationship? Or a lust relationship with the Father? You see, people that lust after things, they have desires. They see things that looks great and they want to be a part of it. Ooh, I want to do that. Ooh, I want to dance like her. Ooh, I want to sing like her. Ooh, I want to play like him. I just lust after it. But you see, love requires that you pay a price. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And that's when most of us fall down. We don't mind coming out and do some showy things. That's right. Mm -hmm. To let people know I can do it. But if I'm in love with God, and that which I demonstrate, somebody sitting in the audience is going to know it. It's going to get more press from people that are sitting in the audience. When she danced, I sat there, but my spirit man was leaping. Hallelujah. Because he was identifying with that which she was demonstrating. You see, when you lust after stuff, they say lusting. Let's think about sexual lust. Most people that are sexually lusting after people don't want to marry them. They just want to get what they can get when they can get it. But the moment you start talking about coming around on it, they back away. Because that's the difference in lust and love. People that love you want to be with you. Forever and ever, amen. They want to be around you. They want to be close to you. There's times that they don't want to live without you. Somebody said tonight, you are I can't remember all the words, but it said something about I love you're my breath. Yes, sir. Oh my God, I breathe the air yes. that you put out. Yes. Because I don't want to be without you yes. ever. Yes. That's on my good hair day and my bad hair day. Yeah. 